Hello, and welcome to Five for Friday for this first full week in June 2023. I was on vacation last week, so I hope you checked out a Five for Friday from a year ago to see if any of the trends are coming true. In reality, much of what I'm observing is somewhat slow moving, but the thing is, it can be slow moving until it's not, and then suddenly everything, everyone is gaga for ChatGPT or Apple mixed reality headsets or flying cars or whatever the next thing might be. So it pays to pay attention and look for the opportunity before everyone is on board with it, right? That's the point of these Five for Fridays. I try to serve as sort of a fractional futurist working on your behalf to help plan for a successful future for you and your business. All right, ready to get started with this week's topics? Then let's get going. We'll start with topic number one, carbon footprints. JP Morgan Chase is investing over $200 million to offset its carbon footprint. And the band Coldplay worked hard to reduce the carbon footprint of its tour, including charging batteries with kinetic dance floors and planting a tree for every concert goer. Unless you live in Finland, shout out to you and your amazing oversupply of emissions free energy, then you should be thinking about your carbon footprint because it's very possible that your customers will start asking or requiring you to do so very soon. Moving on to story number two. In the new race to the moon, the latest news is that China plans to have people on the moon by 2030, while the US is aiming for 2025, which is coming pretty fast. Japan started with a personless moon lander, but the computer didn't anticipate the altitude drop of a crater and assumed it was an error, making it try to land when there wasn't land. Oops. Also, the United Arab Emirates has grand plans to tour the asteroid belt launching in 2028 and arriving in 2030. And if you're feeling space envy, then for a mere $450,000, you too can go up in space with Virgin Atlantic. Get yourself on the list, there's already 800 people ahead of you. And NASA's working to improve food options for long space missions. So who wants a marinated protein with laser-drawn grill marks? Yum. The space race of the past created lots of opportunities for small business. The current one is doing the same. Have you been looking for opportunity in this market? Maybe you should. And with that, let's move on to story number three. Perhaps you already saw this in the news, but Apple CEO Tim Cook introduced the new Vision Pro Mixed Reality Headset. This headset that looks like ski goggles allows you to see your computer screen or phone right in front of you while you can still see the room all around you. And you can just look at apps or tools in order to open them with your eyes. Who doesn't want to wear ski goggles while they update macros in an Excel spreadsheet and also can see their living room at the same time? Word on the street is that the technology is amazing, but we're just not sure how we'll use it yet. Moving on to story number four, robots and restaurants. If you live near Naperville, Illinois, then be sure to check out the robotic kitchen at the Sweet Green Custom Salad Chain. You order on a tablet and it dispenses the ingredients using a robot, putting it into your salad bowl. It's doing better than the pizza robot that was supposed to cook pizza while driving to your house. Apparently it had some trouble with sliding cheese when the truck hit bumps in the road, so Back to the drawing board for that. Despite the pizza robot fail, you can expect to see more service-focused robots taking over low-skill service jobs in both food and healthcare. There's a trade-off for sure, but be open to considering the value of robotic help for your new venture. Now let's move on to our four, final story, number five, the battle for remote work or not. Employers really, really want people to come back to the office, and many of them are mandating it. The new CEO of Farmers Insurance told employees who were fully remote that they have a year to work out coming back to the office three days a week. And now they're all revolting after they made major changes to work remotely last year. Why don't people want to go back to the office? It turns out the main reason is the commute. It takes time and money and causes emotional stress. Other reasons include childcare, flexibility in work hours, and the extra cost of eating away from home. Some employers are encouraging employees to find new ways to bond and create some form of corporate culture, which is challenging when so many are working remotely. But overall, a recent Pew study shows that most Americans are highly satisfied with their relationship with coworkers and their manager, but not so happy about their pay or their opportunities for promotion. It seems to me that communication with your employees is key. How can you make sure they are happy enough to stick around? Two quick bonus stories, here are the headlines, and you can read more if you subscribe to the newsletter. Headline number one, helicopter parents show up at the workplace. You can imagine what that's about. And headline number two, customer ratings have become meaningless. People hand out five stars like it's candy. Apparently we are all defaulting to perk scores because it's easy and less likely to affect someone's livelihood. So score isn't meaningful anymore. 
And that's it for today. Thanks for joining me for this week's Five for Friday. If you're curious about the newsletter, which always has more details and individual stories than the video, then check out my website to request a free copy before you pay to subscribe. And as always, I hope you'll sign up to receive these videos directly from me into your inbox or subscribe on YouTube so you can continue to hear about these signals of change that could impact your small business. Thanks for listening. Happy Friday.